G'day, g'day, g'day. This is Charlie and I'm coming to you today from my locals community with your daily dose of business inspiration. Come on over and join me at askcharlieleatham.locals.com. You can join the com- community for free. You can join in the conversation by becoming a supporter. Supporters get access to join the conversations, create their own conversations, access supporter only content and of course the donation that you make or the the fee that you pay to become a supporter which is only $2 US per month helps me to keep creating content like this, like my podcasts, like my tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about the art of delegation and how you can empower your team for success. Topic number 145, I'm really, I'm, I'm bashing through these topics now, it's great. Okay, so let's talk about empowering your team for success and the art of delegation and what you need to think about. Um, it's hard. That's the first thing I'm going to say. If you're finding it really difficult to delegate tasks out, yep, that's not unusual. You are certainly not alone. And the big part, I think, is that business owners get so used to having to do everything themselves, especially small business owners. We start up our business and we have to do it all ourselves because we've got very little income, very little money, very little profit to play with and get other people to help us. Uh, But I'm going to say that one of the things that you do need to learn early is how to delegate. So yes, it's hard and it's one of the things that you really, really should be focusing on improving that skill, developing that muscle if you like. What do you need to think about when you're delegating? Like some people are like, oh, just find tasks and delegate them out. And yeah, maybe that works for some people doesn't work for most though the way I like to handle delegation is to actually sit down and I'm working through this with actually one of my team members Um, so I use a lot of subcontractors one of my team members is having a bit of trouble finding someone and we're 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 working through how uh, they can set up what it is they need and what it is they need to be delegating so what I've got them to do is write down everything they do Give me a list. What is everything you do? So they've gone away and they've done that. We've got it sitting in a um, a, a whiteboard in Microsoft somewhere. And everything they do, and they've, they've categorized it. You know, that was the next thing I was going to say is categorize it. They'd already done that. Categorize it. You know, so what is it? This is admin. This is finance. This is sales. This is support. Uh, this is client facing. This is internal. Okay, so you can you can sort of break it up and have a look at the different packages of work you have. Okay. What is it that makes you the money? That was the next question. What is it that makes you the money? Because not all of those tasks are going to make you money. You need to do all of those tasks and all of those tasks end up supporting the task that makes you money. But what is it that brings the money through the door for you? Okay. Is that the work you want to keep doing for yourself? Because if it's not, then we've got to we've got to look at how we delegate these tasks out. If it is, that's great. You're going to hold on to those. <laughs> you keep those tasks for yourself. Out of all these other tasks, what what are the things that you want to keep doing yourself, or what are the things that you hate doing? Now, sometimes you've got things that you hate doing that you want to do yourself. They're probably the ones that I'd say get rid of. Get someone else to help you do them. Oh, but Charlie, this that takes so much effort, and I've got to try. And I've got, oh, I've had to learn how to do it myself. Yep, and you're going to teach someone else how to do it. If you've learned how to do it and you hate doing it, you need to teach someone else how to do it. You need to have your process. You need to have your policies all set around it. So that's some of the things that you need to think about when you're delegating. It's what tasks do you have within your business? What is the task that directly make make you money? You've got to know what they are. What are the tasks that you like doing and want to keep doing? Hopefully, they relate to the tasks that can make you money. And what are the tasks that you absolutely hate doing? They're the first three questions that you need to ask. Now you've got a really nice package of work or packages of work and you can start to break them down. Now, out of these things that you hate doing, what can be broken down into simple task-based, step-by-step based tasks that you, you can hand off? Okay, great. Go and write those down. 
go and write down the steps for them. Before we even go and look for someone, go and write down the steps for them because this is what we're going to use to write the job description, the position description, the tasks, whatever you want to call it, the scope of work for who we're looking to bring on to our team to help us achieve success. Okay, now we've got all of that. Let's go and look for someone. Until you have that foundation, you're not going to be able to delegate. Once you've got that foundation and you've got your step-by-step -step processes, and I really strongly recommend that you have step-by-step -step processes for the people that you're bringing onto your team. Now, some of the work is going to be, I don't care how you achieve it. These are the objectives that I want to achieve. Uh, and that's normally the way I do my work. It's like, okay, here's what I want you to do. Here's, here's what I need to achieve. I don't care how you get it. This is your input. This is the output. What you do in between, I don't really care. There's a few things that I need you to meet in that though. I need these systems updated. This needs to be updated when this is done. Over here needs to have an update done. We need to send an email out when this occurs. Now, we can automate all of that, but you need to be ticking boxes and um, setting statuses along the way. You don't get to the end of the process and go, oh, I've done it all and yet yeah, walk away because no one knows you've done it pretty much. So you need to have your step-by-steps. Uh, and whether that is uh, exact, this is how you do what I do, sometimes you need to do that, or whether it's a here are the things that need to be met along the way either way you've got to have that written out once you've got that and you've chosen I'm, I'm not even going to through, go through how we recruit and how we find someone to do that once you've got someone in on your team you need to trust that they're going to do the work now um i'm not a micromanager i in fact prefer not to manage people i like to trust people and say you said you can do the work go do it just make sure you're giving me the feedback within the systems that I've set up so that I know what's going on some people are micromanagers though and if, if you're looking at yourself at the moment and yeah, that's me okay but that's going to add to your workload and it may not be helping you achieve the success that you need to achieve and achieve the um improvements that you want to you want to achieve by having someone come on and do all these things so you might need to work on yourself a little to step back and trust that they're going to do the job right now if you're concerned um one of the ways i've handled that before in previously is to say look what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk you through the tasks especially if i'm handing over a new task i'm going to walk you through it we're going to sit here i'm going to video we're going to video call you're going to do it. You're going to share your screen. I'm going to watch so that if you have trouble, I'm here. Uh, I'm. If you need me to, I can show you how to do it and then I'm going to make you do it. I'm going to make you do it two or three times on, until we're comfortable that you know what you're doing and then I'm going to let you go and do it. So you might find that that works really well for you. You can do that a couple of times. Know that you've given them, know that they've got the right thing and then you can step back. But don't micromanage your team. Don't, micro, don't, don't micromanage um them don't stand stand over them and say, oh how you don't no, you're not doing it this way the other thing is understanding that just because you do it one way doesn't necessarily mean someone else has to do it that way they may have another way of doing it that still achieves the outcome and what you've got to ask yourself is is there any harm in it why do you, why is it important that they follow the process step by step as you've written it versus them doing it their way and if there's a reason for that that's great know what that reason is so you can explain it to them go back a couple of inspirations where i was talking about the openness um, of communication and uh, being vulnerable and saying to people i need it done this way this is why because you can explain to them it's really important we do it this way for these reasons and then they have some ownership of it or they can take some ownership of it. So there's some things to think about in terms of delegating. Um, oh, what did I forget? I forgot the feedback. Didn't know the feedback and measurement. Don't just let it run. Don't, don't just say, oh, yeah, I trust that you've got it and then walk away. Uh, I'm certainly not advocating that. What I am, what I will advocate is that once you've got the process going, 
you arrange regular check-ins and uh, I use Discord. I have my team on Discord. We've got a group channel and I've got individual uh, chats going with each of them. And once every couple of days or once a day even sometimes, depends on who it is, sometimes they'll just check in with me. Hey, I'm here. I'm working, doing this. Great. Thanks. Any problems, anything I need to know? No, good. But every couple of days I'll go back and say, hey, how you doing? Anything I need to know? Can I help you with anything? Is there anything that I'm not doing that you need me to do to make this this work? That's my job as a leader. That's my job as the manager uh, of, of, of the organisation. So make sure you've got your feedback in place. Make sure you've got your check-ins in place. And the last thing is make sure you've got some measurements in place. Is this working as well as you need it to work? Are you getting the improvements out of having someone on board doing this work or is it costing you more time, more energy and more money to have them there? Because if that, but any of those last bits are true, you need to go back and see why. All right, so that's some, some points on delegating to your team and how you can achieve uh, some success through it. I love having a team. Um, it is sometimes incredibly stressful if I have the wrong person come on board it is sometimes incredibly stressful so I'm if you if you're saying oh, I've just had so many bad experiences I do hear you I do see you if you'd like some help reach out via dms any of the social media channels I'm on or uh, the web chat on my website uh, whatsapp using the company phone number or um, you know you can ring us even or send us an email whatever I'd love to help you though. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell so you find out when I drop more content. Please leave reviews so people know whether the content's good or not. Preferably it's good and you're reviewing it to say that. Or um, maybe share this episode with someone who needs to hear it today. Apart from that, I will see you all tomorrow.